and Mary, now and forever. Today's first reading comes from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And he had gone there and evangelized them and explained the truths of the faith, including our Lord's resurrection and the future resurrection that all believers uh, would come to share. And so there were some who were wondering about this teaching of the resurrection. They wanted more specifics. How are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come back? And so St. Paul goes on to try and explain a little bit about we, what we can know about the resurrection. And he uses this comparison between the first Adam, that is the first man, and the second Adam, or the new Adam, Jesus Christ. And he explains how the first Adam was formed from the earth, and he was an earthly man, that is, uh, he sinned, right? And because he sinned, uh, he had to suffer the consequences and return to the earth, okay? Uh, you are from dust, and to dust you shall return. But the second Adam, Jesus Christ, uh, brings with him a life-giving spirit. So again, uh, all of those who will uh, reap the fruits of the redemption, believing in him and obeying his commandments, uh, will share in his glory. He is the heavenly one. He is the second man from heaven, and after his resurrection, he had a glorified body. It wasn't just a natural body uh, like that of Lazarus after he was raised from the dead, uh, but Christ has a spiritual body that has all the characteristics of the glorified body that we read about in the gospel, that is clarity. It has a certain heavenly brightness to it. Uh, in the gospel, that's when Christ wanted to reveal it. Uh, in fact, he revealed that beforehand already on Mount Tabor. And it has agility, that is, he can move from place to place instantaneously. It has subtility, that is, he can move through barriers, such as the tomb that enclosed him. Uh, remember, the tomb was sealed, uh, and it remained sealed uh, when the women showed up to anoint the body, which means Christ, risen from the dead, passed through the walls of the tomb without needing to open or to roll the stone back. So St. Paul is teaching all of this to the believers at Corinth, uh, but the gospel teaches us about the necessary condition. That is, you need to have the word of God planted in your soul and bearing fruit for eternal life. And we see in the gospel that three out of four times the word of God is not producing fruit in souls uh, for various reasons. And so today we celebrate uh, this mass in honor of Our Lady assumed into heaven uh, because she was not only uh, good soil, but she was the best soil. And in fact, the fruit that she bore with her life here on earth is almost infinite. Okay, we can mention first that she bore the Son of God from her own womb. Okay, the Holy Spirit uh, worked in her for this miraculous conception of the Word of God, uh, made flesh, the Word made flesh. And then her uh, role as spiritual mother, cooperating with the Redeemer in the work of redemption, Again, she bears fruit uh, for eternal life for all of her spiritual, spiritual children, our mother in the order of grace. And so Our Lady had that uh, generous and good heart, namely an immaculate heart. And she bore fruit through her own perseverance up to the foot of the cross. And because of that, she is also the first uh, to experience the fruits of that redemption in her body, being assumed into heaven, uh, following her heavenly Son. And so we entrust ourselves today to the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our mother, uh, that she can lead us along this path of salvation and glory. Uh, we entrust our 
souls, okay, the soil of our souls to her, uh, that she can be that heavenly gardener, causing our souls to bear much fruit as well for eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.